Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Train Sim World, and welcome to the BR Heavy Freight Pack Add-on DLC Loco DLC Add-on, and this is the Northern Transpennine Leeds Manchester DLC route. Yeah, it's possible that I got that all wrong, all backwards, but you know, it happens. So this is the Whistler and Gronk scenario. It's supposed to take 40 minutes. Let's see if we can knock it out. 24 yards, climb aboard and sit in the driver's seat. Well, there's really only one loco close by, and it's this little shunter right here. Now, uh, I will let's get let's get started. Once we get rolling, we'll have some time to talk a little bit. I can tell you what this DLC is all about. It's been out for a little while. It's been out for at least a few weeks. Uh, wait for clearance. Wait for the line to clear. Okay, it seems like a reasonable thing to do. Show me the other end. Ah, there it is. The business end as they say. Very carefully use my mouse to get us pivoted around here. Right. That's nice. That is the, uh, that's the Gronk. Right, this is what we got. Included is the BR Class 40 Whistler in BR Corporate Blue Livery and the BR Class 08 Gronk in BR Corporate Blue Livery. That's what we're looking at right now. The BR 12T Van Wagon and the BR 100T TEA Bogey Tank Wagon. And then there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, release date. Release date. Do we get a release date? Uh, it's looking like June 6th. So, I'll uh, give it six weeks ago. Seven weeks ago. Train brake. Set the train brake to running. We can do that. Train brake to running. There we go. Set the reverser to forward. Forward, I said. There you go. Request access before proceeding. Okay. May I proceed? Uh, proceed at restricted speed. Now, are we moving already? Holy smokes. I All I did was uh, release the brakes. Apparently, we're on a bit of a grade. Go back here. Yeah, there we go. In fact, let's do this. Let's go... Let's go head out the window. So we are a little bit slideshow right now. We're in a town and in a yard and it's raining. So we're, we're a little bit slideshow, but I've always struggled with this sim as far as FPS. Uh, I, I know other people have as well. I certainly have. Once we get out of the yard, it, it opens up a little bit. I do love it. Man, you know something else I love particularly about freight railroads? Is it's like there's no, there's no era for freight. And I know there is, and I know for people that are really, really, really into trains, they can, you know, spot things, they can spot details that I can't spot. But, like, when I look at passenger railroads, passenger railroad stock, rolling stock, you know what I mean? I can, I can see the era, you know? I can sort of see what's up. When I look at freight, it's like, oh, that could be any time between, like, 1955 and 1985. I think this is in the 60s, 50s and 60s. I don't know. I really don't, but it's it's got a fantastic industrial look to it. I really do like what Train Sim World does with this stuff. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. We were quite a ways from our, from our goal in terms of distance. Right, now couple up to these wagons, pull forward so the locomotive touches the wagons, then climb down and hook the couplings together manually. Everything is happening so fast right now. 223 yards to the 12T vans. Moment. Okay, so we're just we're just pulling forward here. And we are, what, one, two, three, four, five cars there. Okay. So, brake is off again. Brake is off again. Right down here. I think I can see them just beyond the end of the five cars that we have on. I think I can see where we're headed. Okay, so let's get these hooked up. I said in the introduction for this that we're we're supposed to build a consist. I have to think then that we will. Hello, good morning. I have to think then that we will put this shunter away and then hop in that other loco down there and get started. Just a touch of break. Just a little bit. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm nothing but pleased with these. And I, 
I know I'd said out of protest that I wasn't going to buy all these Loco add-on DLCs, and I bought all of them except one. I think I still have to get the DBBR155 for one of the German routes, and I will. And it, what I'll most likely do is do that DLC next week. I know these have been out for a few weeks. Uh, these are things that you may already have seen or may be familiar with, but they're new to me. But I'll do that DBBR155 DLC next week, and then the week after that, or middle of August, is when TSW 2020 drops. And we'll talk about that in a second as well once we get rolling. Slow this down. Right about there. Oh, frame rate. Ah. To, wait. Or, or what? Hang on. Oh, we were all the way down there. Okay, it said we were still 50 yards away. Oh, game. What are you doing? What are you doing, game? You're, you're messing with my head. So we pull right in there. And we set those. Okay. So then we go back in cap. We bring our head in the window. We stand up from the seat. We're going to walk over here. Open the door. Hop down. Get this all sorted out. So yeah, uh, Train Sim World 2020. And that's... I, I'm not sure what to expect. I'm expecting good things. But... I'm always expecting good things. Manual coupling, uncoupled, click to couple. You got it. Objective complete. Okay, very carefully. The general freight train is now ready to make its journey to Leeds. Run this class 08 back to the siding, stabling it for further pilot duties, then take over the general freight service. Right, so the only way we can do this is we have to uncouple. Makes perfect sense. We're going to hop back up in here, climb up the ladder, inside, shut the door, over here, sit down, throw her in reverse, brakes off, brakes are off, everything's off, and we're going this way now. Fantastic. Okay, uh, where is our, is it, let's get our cursor back on. Is it this one? Oh, yeah. I love it. See, for me, that's a crazy detail. But I know for somebody who's, like, way into trains, they'd say, Oh, you know, the the Class 08 didn't have a wiper like that. It had a completely different kind of wiper that looks almost identical. Man. That's some detail. That is some detail, for sure. So, yeah, uh, Train Simulator 2020. Now, I don't, I don't know what changes there are going to be in the sim itself. I know train simulator also by dovetail they make some incremental changes every year but nothing really profound changes and that cuts both ways you know on the one side it's like was well, this a new game or is this a patch and on the on the other side it's like well don't do too much because if you continue like making these these really radical changes to the sim or the game every year pretty soon i won't be able to run it even though it's the same game and that's sort of a I don't know, like an agreement, social contract kind of thing that we have with developers. If I bought a game and it runs on my machine, don't change it without, I wouldn't say without telling me, but you know what I mean. Don't patch it in a way that I can't run it anymore. That's, you've, you've made the game obsolete even after I, I bought it. So, you know, that's us as gamers. We're never happy. We, we, want, we want games to constantly be improving, just not faster than our hardware improves. So I don't know what changes are in store for the game as far as that. I know one that new route is supposed to be added. One new California route, West Coast route. We'll see what that is. Uh, could be passenger trains up and down the coast. Could be freight further inland. Uh, I've heard both. And I heard one sort of wild speculation rumor that it could be old Union Pacific steam. I know the steam folks are feeling a little, a little left out right now. I know they don't get a ton of love anyway. I, there's plenty of steam in Train Simulator, but there's significantly less steam in Train Sim World. And when I say less, I mean none. There's no steam yet. I, yeah, I mean, I can do without it. For me, it's a novelty. I, I think for other people, that's the only reason they play Train Sim is because of the steam. So th that could be. But like I said, it's not. There, there are not many people that I know of that are 
thinking steam is what's going to be happening next in TSW. So we'll see. And it, I will I will review that as soon as it comes out. Now, I'm told, and again, this is that sort of, you know, it's half, half information and half rumor mill, but I'm told as well that, let me get this thing parked. I'm told as well that if you already own any iteration of TSW, any bundle, all right, park that. We need to turn this off. All right, we need to turn that off. We're gonna set our handbrake. So we're gonna set our handbrake. All right, and we want to go to neutral. Okay. Okay. Where's our new goal? I don't see a goal at the moment. Uh, uh, what is our goal? Uh oh. Now I've done it. Now I've done it. What is our goal? Uh, set the train brake to. Is it full service? Yep. That's what it was. Okay. So now we can turn this off again. Don't need that. Climb aboard and sit in the driver's seat of the class 4 0. You got it. Uh, so we're going to close our window. Oh, the details. Stick right out here. Going to manipulate our mouse on a tiny desk. And now we're going to walk. Oh, we're going to walk. You know, you can file this. You can definitely file this under Gamers Are Never Happy. Because in Euro Truck and American Truck, myself and a lot of other people are like, man, why can't you get out and walk around? It'd be so cool if you could get out and walk around. It'd be so cool if there was manual hookup as far as electrical and air, right? You had to hook your lines up, maybe uh, thump your tires, do a little tire pressure test, you know, all that stuff. Too bad you can't get out of the train and do all that. Train? Truck. Too bad you can't get out of the truck and do all that. Now, here we are. You got to get out of the train and walk, and it's like, oh, man, I, don't make it that realistic. Can't you fix it so I can, like, teleport to that other train? No. No, you can't. So that's, that's gamers, man. We are never satisfied. It's never quite right. It's close. It's never quite right. Uh, so speaking of, and very much off topic, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood is, ooh, is really not being well reviewed and, and really not, uh, yeah, people don't care for it. Uh, so that's, that's two for Bethesda this year. That's two, two fails. Makes you wonder what people are thinking. And who tests these things? Is it it's when a game is released and it and just for the moment, for this discussion, let's assume that there's no vote rigging, that there's no astroturfing, that there's no sock puppets, right? Let's just assume that for the I'm I know that does happen, but let's just assume for this discussion that's not happening. If you release a game and it tests universally not good after it's released, how did you not come across that as you were developing the game? Of course you had testers in-house. Of course you had beta testers, right? How can you make it all the way through to full retail release of a game? And at no point in that process did anybody say, uh, you know, man, this game, it's, it kind of sucks. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you should fix some things. Or... The other scenario is that is the game fixed, right? That that game that's being re released to like a 40 score, 40 out of 100, that game is the improved one. You should see what they didn't release. I love it. I love it. There's a little lantern that appears on the back of a train. How old school is that? What era is this? It's got to be the 50s or 60s. There's a lantern back there, man. I love it. I love it. Very quaint, very homey. So, uh, so yeah, it's, um, I watched a couple people play it, and there are YouTubers. There, there are a couple shooting games that I play, and a couple that I have played in the past. But for right now, I'm focused entirely on simulation gaming. But I do watch YouTubers play shooting games, and games like Wolfenstein. And I started a couple series, and I made it about 10 minutes into episode one of each one, and I had to... I had to turn it off. I had to go away. I, it's not even a game that's fun to watch. And it, it, like I said, it really does, I wonder, like, what what happened? You know, where, where did things go wrong for that game? 
So we'll see. Cab door is closed. Cab door is open. Climb up the steps. You got it. Cab door is closed. Sit in the driver's seat. Set the train brake to release. We can do that. Release. Wait for the brake system to charge. That's happening right down here. We are charged. Apply over 30% throttle to get moving. Is that right? I feel like our brakes are not... Yeah. Oh. All right. We'll give her a go. Over 30% throttle. Just like that. Just like that. Okay. Crank up a little wiper here. One more speed going there. It looks like headlights are on. Let's take a look. They certainly are. Okay. There we go. Speed limit is... 15 miles per hour right now. I have no idea how this train handles, and we are heading downhill as well. Oh, dear. We are uh, we're picking up speed pretty, pretty quickly. Let's see how the brakes on this thing are. I'm going to be very, very careful on this route because, as I said, I don't know this train. Now, there are similar trains on this route and on some of the other vintage UK routes, but I personally have never driven this train, and I've never driven it with... We've got... Um, that's. I wouldn't say that's a... That's a huge freight train, but it's, you know, there's some weight back there. So we'll be careful as we go. What we got? We got green signal ahead. Our frame rate has picked way up as we left that yard. Yeah, fantastic. I don't know, man. These things are 20 bucks. These DLC Loco add-ons, they're 20 bucks. Where are you at on that? I'm, I'm, mm, you know, uh... I'm okay with it, but I'm not okay with it. I, I would like to see... Maybe I'd like to see more bundling. I think that would be fair. Now, I know Dovetail does do a fair amount of bundling. But I'd like to see more. And I know that cuts both ways, too. You pay full pop, you pay full retail for a game, and then six months later you see it for 80% off. Ooh, that stings. Well, you know, if you don't want to pay full pop, don't buy things on day one. I'm not being an ass when I say that. I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, be confrontational like you did something wrong. That applies to me as well. Uh, if you buy a game on day one, you're going to pay more for it, and it, it's not going to have any patches at all. It's not going to have any fixes at all. So it, you may be paying too much for not enough, whereas a few months later, you can either pay less for the same thing, and it's a better price, better value, or you can pay the same price after it's been fixed a couple times. It's also a better value. So who's to say? Uh, I don't know, man. Gaming is... It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. But I do love it. And I do love these old trains. It's just... Look at this, man. This Everything in here is just metal. There's absolutely no plastic. No synthetics. It's just all metal. I'm, I'm betting that's like plate glass. You know, no safety glass. Probably want to be careful if you... Break a piece of that because you would get a giant, like... Giant wedge of glass coming at you. Uh, hang on. Hang on. Let's start slowing down a little bit early here until we get a feel for these brakes. Yeah, like nothing. Nothing. Nothing happening. Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, we're going to have to be very, very careful driving this train because it, it's. It is not responsive. Okay. Okay, we will we'll be very aware of that as we go. Oh dear, okay. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Uh, we, our scenario might be over right here. I don't know if we can stop this thing in time. Yeah. Yeah, we... we we might be wrapping up right here. I don't I don't think we're gonna stop before this signal. Oh. oh game. Oh game. Why you why you mess with my emotions? Hang on, it's gonna take a minute for our brakes to charge up here. Good. 
we are rolling once again. Are we? Are we? There we go. Oh. Mm. You know, you wouldn't think that a that something like driving an old an old rickety 50-year-old train could be exciting, but it can be. That was actually kind of exciting, I have to say, but we made it. While that's, while we're getting back up to speed here, I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. And I'm trying to think what else is going on. Yeah, uh, Train Sim World 2020 drops middle of August. WRC 8 drops in September. Farm Simulator 2019 Platinum Edition. I thought that was going to be released in mid-August. It's actually going to be released in mid-October. And then Automobilista 2 is going to release in December. So there's, I feel like, one good game, for me anyway, there's like one good game coming out per month for the next four months, plus DLCs. So you do have things like these loco add-ons. Uh, there's going to be... What was the other one that I saw? Oh, it's it's escaping me. I can't think of it right, right at the moment, but there was another DLC that I saw. Oh, uh, Road to the Black Sea. I feel like something's, something's gone amiss with that, but that is a DLC for... Euro truck, and that's going to be released hopefully soon. But yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff and a lot of a lot of content that I've been looking forward to. So it's going to be a good fall for me, good autumn for me as far as gaming goes. I'm curious. I've never I've never really taken a serious look at this before, but I'm wondering if Train Sim World that we're in right now has dynamic weather. If it's raining, is it always raining exactly the same amount or does it rain more or less right does the rain taper is that is that just a fixed quantity as we go through a scenario or through a route I wonder about that I've never paid enough attention to it to see I'll have to start trying to spot that I guess I could also take a look online and see if anybody's got any information about whether those conditions change as you move through a either from one area to the next or through time or whatever. Back our throttle off just a little bit. Get ready to slow down. Yeah, just a little bit of... We're not loading tiles or anything. Just a tiny little bit of stuttering. We're at about 50 FPS right now. But I'm seeing a little, little stutter. And that's, well, that's what I was saying earlier when we were starting the video. You know, we as gamers, we always want things to improve. Just don't improve them so radically that it makes things worse. And because everybody's on different systems and everybody's got different settings, and you know how that goes. You know how that goes. You can't make a game that pleases everybody at once. I'm, I'm actually impressed with how many different settings I'm seeing in graphics now. Tons of tons of sliders. There used to be, you know, four or five sliders. There was obviously screen resolution. There was maybe an FPS cap. There was what, what kind of anti-aliasing do you want? Now there's like post-processing and just all kinds of stuff. So based on both your graphics card and also I guess your expectations of FPS and what your priorities are. I mean, different cards render different effects and do different things better. Some cards are great for anti-aliasing, some cards are great for this, some cards are great for that, some cards make hair and skin and grass, whatever. And others don't. So I feel like when you're setting graphics now, you can dial them in specific to not just what you like, but also what your card is good at. And that didn't used to be the case. So I, I know that developers are... I, I hope they are. They, they appear to be making an effort to accommodate us as gamers. And I think that's, it's smart, you know, please your customers, give your customers what they want, it's just smart. But I think it's also, um, oh, how do I want to say it? it it's, it's almost a, the way it has to be from now on because there are, whoa, whoa. 
was I, what was I to do about that? Oh, you know, I've been told by people that you can, if you know the code, you can like spot those changes coming. Ah, I don't know, man. I can't. <laughs> I certainly can't. I have not been able to sort some of that stuff out. But, like I said before, I'm not a, I'm not a super duper rail fan. Let's hop outside and see if we want to do, uh, want to do a little screenshotty with our, with the cooling tower up here. Yeah, it looks nice. We're gonna do a, uh, gonna do a little F12. Beautiful. Maybe we'll do another one on the other side. So yeah, I'm, I, I complain about it, like I complain about everything, but I, I have to say ultimately I'm pretty pleased with this, pretty pleased with this sim and, and, uh, and even with the DLC. And love it. Here, right about somewhere out of here, yeah, about right there. Nice, going over the bridge. Beautiful. So we're going to get into leads. We'll get this parked up, and uh, I'll get this into render. And then tomorrow, look for another Gazelsberg map video in Farm Sim. And then Friday, oh, fingers crossed, Friday. And again, on Sunday, we're going to be bringing racing back to the channel. We'll see how that goes. Uh, I've got, I've got a lot of optimism about it, but I'm also realistic about what I've discovered, which is how hard it is to make an interesting and compelling racing video. It, it's it's easy enough to turn on capture software and drive a car, but to make something that is interesting in any way is uh, it's much harder than I thought it would be. And even when I'm watching other YouTubers now, or when I'm watching coverage of iRacing, there are several channels that just do race coverage of iRacing. And apparently they're affiliated with iRacing and they've got access to special feeds and special cameras. And there are a lot of things that you can see they're doing on their end to make those videos as good as possible. And it can still be hard to make a video interesting, to make it anything that, that you care about the ending of it. So I'm going to try to bring that to my channel, but I, I, my eyes have been open to how incredibly difficult that is. So we will we'll give it our best effort. And we'll see how it turns out. That could be, yeah, Friday could be the first... First time in a long time that we've had a proper race on the channel. We'll see. Here. Get back up to 60. But the closer we get to leads, the more careful I want to be, because those speed limit drops, man, and the, the red signals. Whoa. Not good. Tough on my nerves. Here. I don't know why this loco is called the Whistler. If you're familiar with that, if you know the reason for that, let me know in the comments because I'm full of curiosity. And also, hang on. I also want to know why we can't get down through this little door right here. And I believe up in the front. Okay, no, hit, yeah, if we look even right here, turn my cursor back on. Like, uh, I might be in another loco. I swear there's a... Oh, interesting. Can you check that out? Right, throttle is on right now. We are making amps. There's the amps right there. Ready? Check it out. No amps as soon as we stand up. Oh, details. I love it. We got amps again. Do we? Yeah, we do. Okay. There's a red signal. It slid on a lot earlier for this one. Just in case it doesn't go green, because that last one, we were not going to make it in time. Not even close. So that is a that is a very cool detail. That is, uh, is that the dead man switch? Is that the DSD pedal? But when you stand up, your throttle cuts to zero. That is... Stuff like that just fascinates me. Mm -hmm. 
can go, yeah, we can go a little faster than this. I wanted to slow down. I didn't want to slow down a mile out. There we go. We are going up a bit of a grade here. There we go. up to 60. heading all the way into Leeds. Okay. Not a problem. We seem to be we seem to be getting the timing just about right on these We seem to be getting the timing just about right on these signals. That we're getting to them just as they're switching over from, from red to yellow. Or red to green, so we'll try to time this last one. Or this next one, just about the same way. We'll try to. signals. We've been getting the timing right on these signals, but I'm not convinced that that's, you know what I'm saying? We're going to miss one. Like we're not going to get that red signal. No. This one. Longer. Okay. Now we're descending into leads, so I want to keep an eye on things here, def definitely. Not too bad. Although, I mean, it's coming up on 1%. Uh, yeah, it's something to be aware of. Okay, what do we got here? 
going to 60. We've got three miles to go. I think we're going to be getting into some yard too. It looks like on the map, it looks like. We've got yeah, a little bit of yard here and then a lot of yard here. So obviously we won't be going very fast through that entire area. Pedestrian bridge, beautiful. You know, when I have these headphones on, I, I hear things in my headphones very often. I have no idea if what I'm hearing is in my headphones or in the real world. I think I might be hearing some things in the real world, but I can't tell exactly. Slow down there. We're going to 25 and two and a half miles, but we can go to 60 now. All right. And we are still descending. Okay. Almost there. A half mile or so. Let's take a look outside.
These yards are amazing, but they do really kill my frame rate. Right. Ten. Breaks, but that's okay. Well, somehow, despite a little bit of drama, somehow we made it in one piece. I'll take it. So let's get parked up here. I believe that'll be the end of the scenario. And we'll get this posted. All right, this is nice. This is nice. I haven't spent a lot of time on this route, so I have not spent a lot of time in this yard. This is nice. Beautiful. check. I always forget to check this. Is that we're on the right route? And we are. Okay. It's interesting that they've got us parking this freight train at a passenger platform, but you know what? I don't ask too many questions. I just work here.
go. Objective complete. Okay. This freight train will continue on to York, where it will be unloaded to deliver goods all around Yorkshire. Fantastic. That sounds like a great idea. That what happens. There we go. All right. Beautiful. Well, that all worked out. Right on, folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Train Sim World. This is the BR Heavy Freight Pack DLC add-on, and we'll see you next time. Take care now.